I'd like to take this occasion to thank all of the Periscope live stream community that engaged with me in January and February of 2020 on this Vietnam quest. Je voudrais remercier la communauté Periscope qui a participé avec moi durant cette tournée au Vietnam. Oh look, snacks. They're healthy snacks. So um, the first day here, I uh, I did I changed some money, and I met this uh, delightful young lady, who was like a, a junior staffer in an establishment, and um, we got to talking, and um, her English was really good, and um, and I was able to exchange uh, cash for Vietnamese dong because. I was in need of spending uh, spending money, and then I ran into her uh, on the street. Um, yeah, yesterday, I guess. Yesterday, or the day uh, the day before yesterday, and uh, on the live. And I know that you guys. Uh, so she had been uh, getting provisions with her friends, and I assume it also has to do with uh, New Year's. So they have like. Um, you know, like uh, candied, uh, candied plums and things. So everyone's accumulating a lot of like food stuffs, things that I guess at only a certain time of year. You kind of so it's very interesting to see. Do you have a motorcycle too? Not yet, uh, Tudal. Not yet, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, hmm, seems like he's seeing none of your comments. Okay, Chris, Tim, I took his answer as a no, not for tourists. Okay. I caught your rooftop scope. Beautiful. Oh, thank you, Cinnamon. Oh, is my cold getting better? It's not getting worse. It's, it's kind of stabilized, and uh, I don't feel as run down today. And um, the... Um, the spry weather, you know, it's got a, it's a little dip. So with my hoodie, I kind of got a little kick in my step. So thank you for asking, Chris. You're uh, quite the considerable person. Um, let's not talk about the cold because I want to relegate that to the past. And it will be eventually, uh, as soon as possible. But thanks for asking. Uh, you know, I have like, uh, I went into a K uh, circle yesterday and I, I bought a packet of um, Fisherman's Friend lozenges so that I, you know, I'm not coughing. So how cute is that? So I don't cough every, every two minutes. Hey, uh, hockey, how's it going? So it looks like the whole gang is here. We've been wandering around Hanoi, just wandering. Be cool to go motorcycle around over there. Tudal, I totally agree with you, and we're going to do it the right way. We're not going to do it any any old way. We're going to try and do it the right way, or not at all. So, okay. What does this look like? Uh, ice cream bar, Huggy was. So, yeah, village soap. So, I think you could have seen that building. You know that building with the, the rounded uh, wedge? It's about seven stories high from the uh, rooftop scope yesterday. I guess I was from that direction because you can kind of... We were looking at it down from like this. So I helped, uh, I helped a Hungarian couple today with, uh, with their technological issues. They, uh, they were worried about using their devices and uh, they were worried about getting on Wi-Fi without some kind of protection. So I was able to give them a strategy and I was able to direct them to the, um, the telephone company store as opposed to a kiosk 
where they actually went through that whole thing of buying uh, buying data from a kiosk in Thailand and it only lasted half a day and and that was that. Uh, it looks scarier than it is. Like, does this lady look scary? She's got swagger, Tim. She got swagger. And a lot of people got swagger in this kind of thing. Um, there, all of these motorcycle, uh, in order to actually ride a scooter, you kind of get skilled in not hitting people. It's a skill set that uh, you, it comes with the territory. What you need to worry about is getting hit by cars. Uh, to an extent, like, look, watch, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take our lives in their hands. See, nobody is gonna hit me. Not a single one of them. They're all gonna miss me. Miss me. <laughs> hey, uh, UX Cutlery. So I've been on this street before. Let's, let's go this way. Bike gang. Yeah. So... Oh, I think I see an obtrusion. I think I see two or three obtrusions. So this is a oh, this is like the obtrusion. Say we found it by accident. Look at us. This kind of looks like the street where I I bought my sunglasses yesterday. But then again, a lot of streets look. How much to ride a scooter? Um, not a lot of money. When you have an app like uh, the app is called Grab. It's like a Vietnamese Uber for bikes. It's like two or three dollars to get from one part of town on the back of one of these uh, motorcycle bikes. It's not a lot of money. It saves you a lot of time. Uh, you can get to where you need to go fast. And the drivers are skilled, so you know. They get you there in one piece. What has been your favorite place to visit so far? Do you really want to do that to me? Do you really want me to choose? Am I having my Sophie's Choice moment? Here, take this one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I Okay, I, I do actually, I do have a favorite moment. It was my uh, <laughs> Sophie. It was my train street uh, afternoon, uh, just because uh, train street exceeded my expectations in that I kind of knew about it beforehand. I kind of seen other people's uh, YouTubes about it. And somehow uh, my experience exceeded my expectations. And there was a, a special bistro lady who, uh, who made me some food and made me feel very welcome. And uh, yeah, I'd have to say the lighting and uh, just, just the thing on, on Train Street is probably one of my highlights. But uh, damn you for making me choose. <laughs> um, I'd like to be able to have a whole list of things that I cannot choose between them. Uh, no, there are no geishas that I know of in, um, in Hanoi, but there is Chinese culture. You love that. Uh, like the, um, this morning I was having breakfast and there's some uh, Chinese that are visiting from mainland China. And uh, he saw that I was reviewing my, um, my live feed from yesterday. Did I get any leads on dentists from my... I don't know. Uh, no, not from my, uh, but from my concierge, I did. And, uh, but uh, I, got, I ran into a snag. Um, apparently, you cannot, you cannot just get an implant and then go home. Apparently, that is, um, oh, I'm trying to find the right terminology for it, but uh, it's reckless. <laughs> It would be reckless uh, to uh, implant a person and then put them on a plane because apparently a certain amount of follow-up is required as much as five months. 
and it's funny because I kind of looked into, there's a lot of people that do a lot of, um, you know, a dental tourism or some there and the like, you know, where they're looking for a specific procedure that will cost them less compared to where they're from. And hell, why not? I'm here anyway. Uh, but I did not know. So th this is a lesson to you guys. You cannot just order a, an implant like you can order a pizza and then hop on a plane because there's a lot of follow-up that can extend into five months. And you can't slough off somebody else's work to your own dentist after the fact. So they outright refused me, but not in a, in a bad way, just so that uh, in a way that I was not informed. Reasons to stay in the room, I guess. Well, you know, the thing is, is that uh, the implant is not that big a deal. It was just like on a list of potential things. It's not in a, a, in a place, it's like back there. I really don't need it. It's just that it bothered me that I had a missing gap there. And I thought, well, I'm here, may as well. Makes sense, actually. Uh, not me, I wouldn't trust it. Okay. Well, you, there's a lot of people that go into, and then there, you can get some higher price clinics. So there's a range and I looked into it. All right, so I looked into it and I got my answer. It is less than 5K. Well, um, you know, that's, that's in the neighborhood of like North American prices for a single tooth implant because it's a, it's a tricky procedure. You're embedding uh, titanium into bone and it's got to heal and then uh, you know you can put a crown on top of that and all that other stuff and at least that much I know but I did not know there was a, like a lot of follow-up work and um, there's no sloughing off of somebody else's work onto your I, I don't think my dentist would appreciate it either because I do have a dentist back home but I limit what, what I, I get done from her because I can only afford what I can afford Except here, I thought maybe I could afford an implant. Okay, so scratch that one. It was, uh, it was an idea, but it just, uh, you know, it's this, the reality of it, it doesn't work out that way. Probably a better option. Well, I don't really have any plans to go to Mexico anytime soon, but I'll take that under consideration. I mean, guys, it's not a priority. It was just like, I'm here anyway. May as well. That's all it was. So I'm not obsessing over it. It's like uh, now that I've looked it through, I, I've thoroughly kicked the can, I kicked the tires, and um, it looks like it's just not going to be. So I'm moving on, and you guys will too. Okay? So, uh, so guys, help me choose an optician because I really need to, um, uh, to um, bring up to date my uh, prescription so they will sell you a pair of glasses and give you your your prescription update for for free now I like how immaculate this gentleman's um, uh, boutique looks like but we won't linger too long because I don't want to weird him out and then this man looks pretty you know att attentive to detail so let's go about which optician we kind of like just from from what we see. Okay, this guy's on a break. Oh, I think I was recommended this, but it's on my phone and you guys are periscoping me. So I believe these are the people that I was recommended. Too many optician choices. Okay, well, these came by word of mouth from people that I know. So um, I'm a believer of uh, word of mouth uh, referrals for the simple fact that a lot of my business has benefited uh, consistently over the years from free advertising from the power of word of mouth. 